Raymond Reefer is on his way to Australia. Not Raymond Reefer, sorry. Marquino Minley is on his way to Australia to replace Raymond Reefer. Raymond Reefer is on his way to the Caribbean. Hello, everyone, and good night. I really hope you had a marvelous week, a wonderful week. I hope that you have made more money this week than you made last week. I, I trust that you enjoy your day. My source is telling me that while the Jamaica team was at the University of the West Indies at Mona in Jamaica, training this morning, doing some physical at the UA Bowl, where the complex of fields are at the University of the West Indies, they call it the UA Bowl. So while the Jamaica team was at the UA Bowl this morning training, Marquine Laminley got a call from the West Indies asking him if he is prepared to come to Australia to replace Raymond Reefer. His answer was yes, and traveling arrangements were initiated then. I post a video on, on, in the community on the shorts, and in that video, you will see the Jamaica team running, and you will see Mark in the burst out of the pack. And I was told that he was so happy that this morning was the best he has ever trained that he trained really, really hard this morning. Now, my first thought when I got the news, and I don't want anyone to think that I'm not happy for Marquina Mindy. I'm very happy for Marquina Mindy. Very, very happy. Glad that he got the call. He did it selected himself. If he goes to Australia and play, we need to support him. But my first thought when he got the call is, Raymond Reefer batted at three in the last two test matches West Indies played before this one. So why is he being replaced by a pace bowler? That was my first thought. And the next thought that it was, if a bowler is replacing Reefer, why not a spinner? And then I said, maybe the next test is going to play at the Adelaide Oval. So they are not going to play any spinner. It's a day and night match. So they are going to go into the match with six pacers. Because literally six, if you drop chase and bring in a pacer, we'll be going into the match with six pace bowlers. Because older and mayors plus the other three that played in this match. And then you'll bring in either Phillips or Marquina or Minley. Now, as I mentioned, Phillips, initially in my assessment, I think that I'm just going to bring up a picture of Marquina Minley. So that is a picture of Marquina Minley, the Jamaica and, and now soon to be West Indian fast bowler. And as you see there, he's well in the West Indies cap. He, he played under 19 cricket for West Indies and Jamaica. He was a part of the, the enlarged party that toured England in 2020 during the COVID epidemic and the team went and toured in England. So he was part of that. And last year when last year when the the Pakistani and Australia were here, he was he was, he was also a part of the squad before COVID got the, the better of him. So Marquine Lamille, there he is, there is his stats on the screen. His overall stats, as you see there, he has played 42 matches for Jamaica. That's first-class matches. He has gotten 103 wickets. And as you see there, his, boss, his best bowling effort was 5 for 20, and that was this year. And that's his information on the screen. This season, as you see there, he played five matches and got 13 wickets. So Marquine Lominley, the Jamaican fast bowler, have been called up to the West Indies team to replace Raymond Reefer in the West Indies squad. And the argument continues. Why they didn't call a spinner? And I must make it clear, I'm happy for Marquine Lominley. But if I was the selectors, I would have called a spinner. Um, I just want to check on your comment. Um, Double seven, good evening. How are you? Just the, your comment here would be better if they had sent for Carrier or Jimbo. 
I, I, I thought that it would be best if they had sent for a spinner. For a spinner. Mr. Casanova won. Good night. Wow. I thought Chase would be coming back home. No, Raymond Reefer have an hamstring problem. And he, is not, he will not be able to take further part in the... In the no, he's not as fast as Alzari Joseph. Maybe just a little faster than older. But he's, not, he's nowhere near as fast as Alzari Joseph. He's 27 years old. He does not have that pace. Um, I need someone bowling above 140. And that's where we have to look at probably Shannon Gabriel. Shannon Gabriel and I think Shannon Gabriel and Odin Simit are the only two pacers right now that we have in the West Indies, along with Alzari Joseph and O'Shea Thomas. Now, O'Shea Thomas have been training consistently for the, for the past month, for a month to five weeks. He has been training consistently. So those are three players who can bowl above 140. There's also another player from Barbados. But because he's not fit, he's not showing his true class. But I have seen in the past where Primus, Russian Primus his name, have bowled above 140. And if Primus should take off some of that weight, he should be able to hit 140. So those are four bowlers in the West Indies who can hit 140 and above. But they, go, they have gone for Minley. And if I'm to be honest and fair, if I was picking the squad for Australia, in the initial squad, I would go for Minley ahead of Anderson Phillips. But then I have to support who, who they pick. Um, he's deceptive. Double O Seven saying that he's not as fast, but he's deceptive. Sheldon Smith, I, I, that, that's one of the thoughts that came to my mind. Is, is it not Gabriel that should have gone? That's one of the thoughts that came to my mind. Are they not sure of Gabriel fitness? I that's one of the thoughts that came to my mind. I would have gone with Gabriel if I'm convinced of his fitness. I think he is the best man to go. We in the West Indies really need to get Gabriel fit. Gabriel need to fit and to maintain his fitness because by no doubt he's probably the best fast bowler. He's aggressive and he bowls consistently above 140. I would prefer Akeem Jordan from Barbados, cool 007. I saw O'Shea in training with Jamaica. He would be nice and his height would help. Yes, he has been training. I have posted a lot of clips on the channel of Odin tra O'Shea training. And he's really working. His weight has come down. Uh, I look a story about O'Shea. O'Shea went to the Jamaica cricket operation officer and asked him for a shirt. And the Jamaican cricket officer said to, Ode, to O'Shea, gave him a shirt which was large, and the shirt could not fit O'Shea because O'Shea was too big. I am now told that those large, large shirts are fitting him. So obviously, he, he has taken off some weight. So overall, I'm Gregory Gale, but the batsmen need to hold their own. Are they or they can't manage the pace of the Australian. I think the batsmen hold their own, especially the top order. And I'm going to come to that a little later because I really think, I expect the West Indies team to bat better in the second innings than they did in the first innings. I think, in my opinion, they would have learned from this first innings. Um, double would call Shepard. So all of us have an idea of who we would call. All of, that is why I always say that if we are selecting the team, we would select different players. So when the selectors meet and select a squad, we should support those who they selected. I would not have gone with Mindley. I would have gone with a spinner. If I'm going with a pace, I would want to know that Gabriel is fit. But my first option would have to go with a spinner. But Mindley is the one that is going, so we just have to support him. If he is if he is in the playing eleven, we should support him. Who's in that playing eleven for the second test, which will be played at Adelaide, which is a day and night match with a pink test. It appears pink ball test. It appears that they will not be playing Chase in that match. Now, in the show on 
Thursday, when we were doing the show on Thursday, the discussion came up, a very lively discussion came up as to who is the best wicket keeper in the West Indies. I put a poll out in the community and asked the question, who is the best, is uh, the question was about whether Das Silva was the best wicket keeper or not. 54% of you in this community said that Das Silva was not the best keeper. 46% of you believe he is the best keeper. So that is more or less right down the middle. You know, it's, it's not a big swing. So 46% believe that the silver is not the best keeper and 54% of you think he is. Then today I decided then to ask who is the best wicked keeper in the Caribbean? And I list the silver, Dorwich and Hamilton. 48% of you said the silver, 48% said Dorwich and 4% said Hamilton. So I decided to look at the, at the statistics for both Da Silva and Doge. And here is Da Silva in test matches, 16 test matches. That is for Da Silva. His batting average, let me get the young man off the screen. Time to get him off the screen. His batting average, as I see there, Da Silva batting average is 30.65. He had scored one test century and three half centuries. You have taken 57 catches and four stumping. So that's 61 dismissals in 16 tests. And his first class statistics are there. So 41 match, he average roughly 32. He has two centuries and so on. That's his first class statistics. And then now, I look at Doe with statistics. And here's Doe with statistics. 35 test matches, average just about the same. Um, I think that the young man average was 30, 30.65, 30 though which is averaging 29. So they're just about the same. Um, three centuries, nine and a half centuries, obviously paid twice as many match as the silver. But when you look at these two statistics, there's nothing to choose from between the two players. There's nothing. One of the things that I, I could not be able to say, and people talk about glove work and so on. I watched Ben folks from England keeping the match that West Indies beat them. I think it was at North Sound or Bastyr, one of them, that West Indies beat them in that final test match. I watched Ben folks keep, and it's clear that his glove work was better than the silver. That was Ben folks. I need to take a closer look at Dorwich the next time that I see him. I, I cannot recall what Dorwich glove works look like. But when you look at the statistics between both the silver and Dorwich, there's really nothing to choose between the two keepers. And so if there's a split down the middle in this community as to which one is the best, then we just have to support whosoever the West Indies select. The silver, the shot that the silver played and got out last night was atrocious. I think he had faced only two or three balls and then he busts a big drive at Stark and was bowled through the game. That shot was atrocious, and that silver need to tighten up right there. Let's the, the comments are coming in. I don't want to ignore. Good evening, CB of 14. Good evening. Sammy Selt Elvin said that silver all the way. That silver all the way. It's good. Good night. Good night, Christopher here, Paul. I hope we'll be here long enough for the match. How long will you be at the be on the cricket forum? CB14. I, I, I don't know. Hopefully the match will start in a what? In another 20 minutes. I think they will go live in about another third, 10 minutes or so. So let me try and get that now. Um Sashin Singh is saying that he agree with Mr. Casanova one. And Hamilton. Hamilton been scoring good this year. Yes, um, in last last regional four day season, I look at it because I look at all its statistics. Although the Silva and Dowich both score more runs than Hamilton in the last four day series, Hamilton 
was the third leading run getters among the keepers. Now, the thing that probably is not working for Hamilton, the Leewards used Amir Jagnu to keep in some of their matches last year, although Hamilton was on the field. And if Hamilton really want to play for the West Indies, he should always be keeping. He should not allow Amir Jagnu, uh, that the, Trinidadian, the Trinidadian guy, he was playing for the Leewards last year on their occasions when Jagnu kept wicket instead of Hamilton. And if Hamilton really want to play for the West Indies, I don't think he should be allowing Jagnu to keep in some matches. But when you look at the statistics, Da Silva was the leading run scorer in our domestic cricket competition earlier this year, followed by Dowich as wicket keeper. I'm not talking about Bratwaite was the leading run scorer over, overall, the captain. But as a wicket keeper, Da Silva scored more runs than the rest. However, Hamilton had the highest average. So Hamilton was the one with the highest average. As far as the keepers are concerned, I, whosoever has the job, we just to support them. If we're looking at the future, we can't go back to Dorish. Da Silva is younger and show brilliant potential. Okay, so Sammy St. Ellen is saying that if we're looking at the future, we cannot go back to Dorwich. How old is Dorwich? I know Da Silva is probably 27. How old is Dorwich? Now, looking at the match last night, West Indies scored 283. Now, what is disappointing about last night match for me is that after 50, 54 overs, we were 159 for one after 54 overs. And yet still in the next 44 overs, we lose nine wickets, nine wickets for 134 runs. Nine wickets for 134 runs in 44 overs. And the first 50 overs, we made a 54 overs, we made 159 runs for one wicket. It was very disappointing. And I think it was Sheldon Simit who said, I don't remember, but I think it was Sheldon Simit who said that once the up openers are out, then the, the middle is brittle. I remember someone in this community saying so. I think it was Sheldon. And I remember. And I was very disappointed that after the openers out and Blackwood fight fought also, Blackwood fought, Blackwood get a rough deal. If you saw the replay, the ball was just barely clipping leg stump and he got out leg before. Blackwood got a rough deal. But from 159 for four, we should not, 159 for one, sorry, after 54 overs, we should not have collapsed to 283 in the next 44 overs. We were bowled out for 283. The other thing that was disappointing is that Brathwaite 64, Chanda Paul 51, and Blackwood 36. These guys got start. One of them have to make 100. That's how the cricket is played. You got to start. No, good score, 64, good. Chanda Paul 51, good. He's on debut. And some time ago, I remember in 1984, when his father made his debut, his first four innings were 50, like 54, 52, dear about. I, I pray if, if, if this young Chanda Paul repeated that, it would be good. But we hope that he does better, right? But I was expecting that one of these batsmen, either Bratwaite, Chanda Paul, or Blackwood, who got a start, I was expecting one of them to go on and make a three-figure score. So it was very disappointing. One, that the middle fell away, it collapsed. Two, that none of the three batsmen who really got a start went on to make triple figure. One of them need to make triple figures. So I was disappointed in that. Now, Australia is leading by 344 runs. Take your comments, please. Dowich born 1991. So he is at 31 years old. Um, bring Tevin Imlak. Again, Tevin Imlak 
challenge here. Tevin Imlak challenge is that Bramber and Tevin Imlak share wicket keeping duties for Guyana in the regional four day tournament earlier this year, and they just concluded Super 50. Both of them share wicket keeping duty. If you want to push your wicket keeper, you should not allow them to be sharing duty like that, right? So if you want to push your wicket keeper, so maybe that is a challenge. Or you know, mainly replacing Rifa. Okay, he was he was at training this morning with the Jamaica Scorpion at the University Bowl when he got the call. And my sources on the ground in the Jamaica team leaked the information to me that Minley is replacing him. Right? So that's that's how I know. And this source cannot tell me, give me wrong information. So he was at training this morning at the UA Bowl. They were doing physicals at the UA Bowl when he got the call from the West Indies. And, and that's, how I, uh, that's how I know. Australia should never go back to bat if they want to win this game. No. Gregory Gale, they're going to win the game. I think they're going to win the game. But why they went back to back? Let me tell you why they went back to back. And this is this is this is the reason why they went back to back. You see that 98.2 overs that the West Indies batted, Australia need to go back to back so that their bowler can rest, as David Warner said here. When I first saw this statement from David Warner, I was saying that he's lying, you know. But then when I think about it, two reasons. Why he said that they're going to bat until T? One, to give the bowler a rest. Maybe they don't bat as long as till T. But I think he was sending a message to the captain and saying that I need some time to make a hundred. So I think that so I think he was sending a message to the captain. Sorry, that he needs some time to make a hundred. But secondly, that 98.2 overs that the West Indies team batted. It takes some energy out of the Australian bowlers. And I believe that is the reason why they went back to bat. So as David Warner said, they need to give the bowlers some rest. Um, so I cannot believe Bonner is from Jamaica and struggling against pace bowling. It was so funny to see your banner and padded under his arm. Uh, well, Mr. Casanova, um, I don't want to say anything about Banner because Bonner because if you recall on a number of occasions, I've said that Bonner was going to struggle against pace. And it, it it shows, but it is very unfortunate that he got it. I don't want injury to anyone. So I, I, I just don't want to say anything about it. It's very unfortunate. I wish him a speedy recover, a recovery. I, I really wish him a speedy recovery. Bonner shouldn't have played in the game though. Well, Odin Simmons should play Tess and Brandon King and Ravman Powell also. Uh, those are wonderful thoughts. Um, I, I, I am for King. I am for King, but your opinions are all well. I believe, and I've said it at many occasions here, that I believe that Brandon King is the best batsman in the, in the West Indies. I've said it on a number of occasions. If Odin Smith is going to play test cricket, he will have to lengthen his run-up. You remember the last, just before COVID, Odin Smith was playing for Trinidad. And he had a side injury because his run-up was too short for the workload of playing four-day cricket. So if he does not decide to lengthen his run-up, he will never be able to play test cricket. He's going to be injured from that short run-up. Um... Sorry for Bonner, but he seems to struggle at fast bowling, especially the bouncing ball. It's suicide to let him play in, in fast bouncy pitches until he sort this out. Yeah, we, we're really sorry and hope that he recover quickly. Mr. Connor, most West Indians struggled at fast bowling. Bonner concussion may just open the door for King to walk in. Yes, so these things do happen. Nothing is wrong for Australia to bat again. They are going to bat until lunch. West Indies can't bat out a day and a half. Okay, so the comments keep coming in. Now, I was trying to put the West Indies total in perspective. Trying to put the 283 that West Indies made in perspective. Because 
Although we are disappointed, I am very disappointed that the team collapsed from 159 for one to 283 all out. We are all disappointed. We all, I, if you remember on Thursday, I said that I want them to bat out the day. Doesn't matter how many runs they score, I just want them to bat out the day. I'm just, you remember I said so. Just trying to bring up the cricket. I think it soon starts now. So before, I said that I want them to bat out the day. And so I was trying to do some research. And I go back to last year Hashes series this time when Australia was playing England. And I look at England, England score. In the first test, England made 147, 297. In the second, 236 and 192. And as you see the score there, for the five test matches against, Eng against Australia last year, England never reached 300. Never. The closest they went is in the first test when they made 297. So looking back at the West Indies 283, if we put it in context and compare it to what England did last year, it wasn't, it isn't so bad. It's all we move on from here. Now England get four love in Australia last year. The only match that was drawn was the fourth test. This one here, the fourth test where they made 294 and 270. And the reason why it draw was that 294 again, they batted almost 100 overs. And to the 270 that for nine in the second innings, that was also 102 overs with Anderson hanging on. Now, that is one of the reasons why Australia have to go back to bat because the West Indies batters, Although they did not score as fast as the Australian batsmen, they still bat enough off to drain the Australian bowlers. And that's why they could not have enforced the follower. So put that into perspective. England got four love from Australia last year. Immediately after that, came to the West Indies and get one love. But after going back to England, they changed it around. And if you look at this test match that is now being played between England and Pakistan, seven of those players who played against the West Indies when they got the one love are not in that squad. Is it saying that we need to change our squad? I don't know. I don't know if we have the resources. But since England get that one love from the West Indies, they have beaten New Zealand three love. They won the one-off match against India. They beat the South Africa 2-1, and they are now in Pakistan running riot. They scored 657 all out of, at a run rate of 6.5 runs per over. Of 101 over, England scored 657 all out. I think Ben Stoke made like 42 of 18 deliveries, T20 stuff. Um, Ari Brook took a over for 27. That is how what England is doing. Albeit, it looks like it's a batting paradise because Pakistan have now replied with 181 without loss. But the point I'm trying to bring across is that last year in Australia, this time, England was hammered by Australia. Now, West Indies batting 98 overs and making 283 is not such a bad effort on our players. Mark you, as I said in the beginning, I expected one of them to go on and make a hundred, even one of the three that got a start to go on and make a hundred. That did not happen. I'm disappointed about that. I'm also disappointed that the middle fell away. I am also disappointed that we never batted all day yesterday. So these things are, I, I'm very disappointed about. But when we look at them in context, I'm trying to bring up the cricket here. I don't know what is happening here. When we look at those things in context and look at what England did last year, we should still give credit to our players. Um, day four, okay, it's a five, well, five minutes time. Day four, we should still give context to our players. Look at the comments because I really love your comments. Brandon King comes in for South Africa as well as Carrier. 
or Jimbo for Chase. All right, just going through the comment, Double Seven. England narrate the West Indies. Always send a makeshift on team out here. Think them can beat me. I don't necessarily believe so because I know Root was here and um, Bristow was here, Stoke was here. I could remember long ago, most Guyana and TNT struggle at fast bowling. Currently, all teams struggle at fast bowling now. It's signs of the time with Barbados and Jamaican pitches spin friendly now. Okay, so just going through the comments because there's a lot here. If West Indies can push this test into a fifth day, I will be satisfied, even if we lose comfortable. Yes, Casanova, you would recall that in my preview to the test, I was saying that if West Indies can bat, if West Indies can bring this test match into the fifth day after lunch, up to close to tea, even if we lose, I'd be satisfied. And I think it is going into the fifth day. Why is it going into the fifth day? We batted almost 100 overs, 98 overs. And because we batted so long, Australia could not enforce the follow on because their bowlers were tired. And this is now going to force the match into a fifth day. England batted 102 overs. Just, come, just trying to get, take some of the comments here. Casey Carty, Alec Atanes, Tevin Imla. These players will do well at test level through the covers. Thank you for your comment. Abdullah Simpson, the unpredicted, unpredictable challenge. The same T20 players, some of them can play tests because they're still talented more than, than them. Most of who in the test team, but yet again, the test players who have any more, the test players who have, or the test players, um, the test players only get $8,000 per match, you know. Most of them are on retainer, though. They probably get about $10,000 a month as retainer. But for player match, they're going to get $8,000. Listen to see the West Indies bat at almost three runs per over and good and improving, especially against Australia. That's good. True double seven. True double seven. I love that point. I believe West Indies can still draw. Our batsmen just need to buckle down. Yes, but to draw the match, we'll have to bat about 120 overs. Because there's no forecast for rain. And if Australia declare a T, that would leave us to bat 120 overs on a pitch that is said to be cracking up. Although the groundsman said that he left 12 millimeters of grass on it, the pitch, sorry, is said to be cracking up. And for us to bat 120 overs on that pitch, it is going to be difficult. Once this match pass T, if West Indies come out and bat better in their second innings and say score 350, even if we lose, I would be satisfied. If we score 350 in the second innings, Australia will most likely want to send us back into bat 40 minutes before T. I think if Warner out, the declaration will come earlier. I think they want Warner to bat as long as possible. And if he has any chance of making, sorry, of making a, a hundred, they are going to give him the opportunity to make that hundred as long as he doesn't pass T. So if Warner out before T, we may start batting before T. Pura needs some test cricket to build up his mileage. Um, through the covers, Pura needs some four-day cricket before we can select him for the test team. He needs to play four-day cricket. He needs to play red ball cricket. He needs to play for the Trinidad red ball team first before we put him into the test team. That is my opinion. I, 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 am, I am not shooting down your opinion. I'm just saying that mine differs from you, but I welcome differing opinion. But would you agree that before we put him into the test team, he should play some four-day cricket first for Trinidad? That is, that's, that's how I see it. What the rest of you think? I was saying the test players won't make any money if the T20 guys come play test. No one will buy them around the world. Okay, yeah, yes, Abdullah Simpson. I got it, yes. Because in, in truth and fact, these T20 players are probably getting $8,000 to play a T20 match. In the IPL, persons like Shepard and Puran and older, those guys get $70,000, $80,000 just to play one T20 match. The West Indies test players only getting $8,000 to play a test match. 
That is more than what the Pakistani players get, though. So they only get $8,000 to play a test match. I hope the cricket start now. So the West Indies test players, they, they get $8,000. But these T20 players, they get far more money than the test players. And if you are watching the T10, you'll realize and you would have heard that Dwayne Bravo have retired from cricket. Not cricket, but from the IPL. He will no longer be playing in the IPL, but he will be now the coach of the Chennai Super King. Um, it seems like the cricket is a... Um, they are on, they are, the Australian are warming up and, and so on. They are on the field warming up. So the news is that Marquina Minley, the Jamaican right arm fast bowler, whose his celebration here looks like Ambrose, have been selected. I've been reliably informed that he got a call this morning while the Jamaica team was practicing at the UA Bowl. And he's now on his way. Travel arrangement was initiated once he accepted that he will take up the offer. Poor and should play test. It's harder to hit six and four than to block in test. Yes, as I said, I would have, for many years, for about two or three years, I have said to one of my best friends, who he and I talk cricket a lot, that I would like to see Puran to be the West Indies wicket keeper in Test cricket. But I cannot agree for Puran to play Test before he shows us. Because he needs to show us that he wants to play Test by playing some four day cricket. Don't you agree? I think he should play some four day cricket and show us that he wants to play Test. Sorry about that. But I think that he should show us that he wants to play test by playing some four-day cricket. When he does that now, we would all be happy and see that he's serious about playing. So the match is on. Joseph start. That's a very good thing to see Joseph start the bowling for the West Indies. So Australia pushed up to 30 for one. The first ball went for a singer. So Australia is now 30 for one. I'm very happy to see that they start the bowling with 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 joseph um i am putting the link i'm putting the link in the chat i'm putting the link in the chat so if any if anyone want if anyone want to come on i know that sheldon love to come on sometime and talk you can just click on that link and i will let you in and you can come on respect number seven respect number seven have a good evening sir i know it's friday night a lot of us are going out for the Friday night. So I know that you are going out. I'm going to watch some cricket. Um, Double seven, enjoy the night, boss. May you have a great, may you have a great time. So there's the link. If any of you want to come on and chat, I, I will I will let you in so that you can come on and chat. Um, our batsmen gave their wickets away. Older Brooks and the wicket keeper. Yes, I was particularly, I didn't like the shot that, that, that Silver played. He was not at the crease long enough to play that shot. I certainly did not like that shot that he played. Brooks played one wide outside the half stump that maybe he should have left alone. He bust a drive and nicked off. And then older, I, I don't know what older is. It's just like he just glide the ball into leg slip on. I mean, why he, he did, should have just padded away that ball? He was set up. He, apparently, he was, he was set up. So if any of you want to come on, you can click the link. I hope we I hope we can survive and push for a job. I hope so too. But we'll have to bat a very very long time. Oh, over or under forty three point five by fifteen overs. Over, 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 oh, over. They will be over. They'll be over. Sabia fourteen. They'll be over. Um. So that's it. that's the story that I have. I, um, Sabia, over under fifty eight point five by fifty by twenty overs. Over, they'll be over fifty eight. They'll be over that. They, they're going to go hard. They're going to go very hard. I agree with you. All players should play four day cricket for their country to be selected. Saint Elmore Alls, good evening and welcome. Michael Smith, how are you, sir? Good evening. Big up. 
big up i just discovered the link thank you very much for tuning in sir thank you very much for subscribing we we, we almost finished here now but i really thank you for subscribing cbo may you win some money again tonight i know you are always a winner please enjoy the match have a wonderful night and as i said i hope you have made more money this week than you have made last week we need to believe we can draw these test players have shown some fight in the last couple of series yes sashin singh we are hoping that they are draw to bat 120 overs plus though on that third pitch against this australian attack is not going to be easy but we have a, let's keep our fingers crossed if they make 350 i will be very satisfied if the team make 350 i'll be very satisfied but the pitch start cracking up already yo you're not betting as yet you're just chilling okay so thank you everyone for tuning in i really appreciate the company i'm gonna sit back now and enjoy the match and i hope you do too and i really hope that by tomorrow morning when we are batting we will not lose any wicket today and so we'll have all 10 wickets to bat out the final day but it's going to be tall it's going to be tall everybody expect australia to win no one expect west indies to even draw the match so if we draw the match that would be a good result thank you everyone god bless you and remember take care of your loved ones and your family have a great weekend see you tomorrow take care